Hi there, Star Wars Collectors, and welcome to another Boss Bounty video, and welcome to episode 128 of Ask Boss Bounty. This is the weekly Q&A series that drops every Sunday, where I take questions that you leave me in the comment section below and try my best to answer them each week for you. So if you do have a question for next week's episode, please leave them in the comment section below and hopefully you'll be featured. And also later on in the video, we're gonna be doing a couple of different things to break up the questions. First of all, we're gonna be talking about the giveaway. So I did receive that Hasbro box and a lot of the stuff that came in that Hasbro box, I'm gonna be giving away to you guys. So make sure you listen out for that. And also I did receive some awesome things in the post to my PO box from some of my subscribers. So that's worth checking out as well. But before we get onto all that, we're gonna answer a few of the questions break up the video with a couple of those other things and then answer some more questions. So leave a like if you happen to enjoy the video and we'll get straight onto it. Beta Ray Bob says, question for next week. Has it been stated if the new Stormtrooper along with the Stormtrooper Captain, Heavy Assault Stormtrooper are going to have the new hip articulation to go along with the improved ankles? Thank you. Yeah, so first of all, the Heavy Assault Stormtrooper, uh, the images that Hasbro provided, a lot of those images showed that he still had the normal ankles with the sort of bell bottoms at the bottom of there. But if you look at the image that they provided of the figure in the bubble, you can see that they do have the new ankles. And I think one of my friends did reach out to Hasbro and got that confirmed. So the two new Stormtroopers that were revealed, the Game and Greats ones, they will have the new ankles. It is a very good question about the hips though, isn't it? Because if we look at Cosca Reeves here, we can see that she has these new hips. These are hips are used in the Black Series and they are so much better than the old hip style, which this Stormtrooper uses. So, but yeah, as for the hips, it would be nice if the, the Stormtrooper, because they are updating him with the rocker ankles and everything, had the new hip joint. And unfortunately, from any of the photos that we've had from any of the figures uh, that use this mold, I, I really can't tell. And it would be a shame if it didn't because obviously a lot of the new figures that we've been getting have been using those new hips and it would be a shame if the new definitive Stormtrooper did not. But as I say, I can't tell from the photos, but what I will do is I'll try and reach out to um, somebody at Hasbro or whatever and see if they can answer that question for us. But my gut instinct says that they don't but you never know hopefully they will mech dj says great video bb it's essential viewing and i appreciate all of the work that goes into them thank you so much buddy i appreciate that he says i must submit a question and you touched on it earlier like many who lived and loved the original line first time and keeping all their much played figures and vehicles when the power of the force 2 came about i bought every one for the first four years however i now have storage boxes full of them Nobody seems to love them and seem to have a below price tag value. And I know that's partly because so many bought them and the market was flooded. But do you ever see them rising in value like the original Power of the Force? Keep up your hard work. You'll love Tim. Thank you so much. Ah, yeah, the Power of the Force 2 line. What can I say? I mean, 1997 or whenever they came out, I think everyone thought that they were going to be valuable, didn't they? Because at that time, the original Star Wars line was starting to be more and more valuable and obviously you've seen the crazy prices they're at now and i think what happened is that as you say they were overproduced there was thousands and millions of them basically but i think what also happened is that loads and loads of people kept them on card didn't they they kept them mint on card and because of that there's so many of them mint on card now it's a bit like lego and why lego becomes so valuable and i think lego really only becomes valuable when people keep them in the box because essentially with lego people tend to open it don't they and like building it that's the whole point of it but when a set retires, mint in box versions of those instantly go up in value, whereas maybe the open ones don't. And it's the same with the Power of Force 2. Mint on cards, there's so many of them. That's the reason. And I don't think they're really ever going to go up in value apart from some of the, you know, well-known rarer ones like the um, Freeze Frame Weequay, for example. That seems to be one that a lot of people are after. Sandalorian Toy Hunter says, Hey boss, for next week, do you think they will release a four pack of the Emperor's Royal Guards for the Return of the Jedi anniversary? Thanks. I I don't think so. And I also hope not as well. And that's purely because they reissued that um, Royal Guard and he is everywhere. If you wanted to get him for retail price or even less than retail price, you can very, very easily do that. Certainly in the UK, you can as well. I would imagine you can pick him up for 10 pounds. And if you wanted to get four of those, that's probably going to cost you less than one of those 
four packs will. So yeah, I doubt it, but you know, never say never with Hasbro. Rob Rossati says, hey boss, love the show. Question for next week. What is the true value of VC20 Yoda, the Canadian variant? All right, so for anybody that is watching that doesn't know what the Canadian variant is, I'm sure most of you do, but basically it's the Canadian version of VC20 that was the Revenge of the Sith figure brought out on a ESB card image, but with the Return of the Jedi logo. Um, but it is still VC20 and it only came out in Canada and it's why it's it's so rare it's probably the most expensive vintage collection item in the whole line I, I would imagine you know there might be some others like an unpunched Cody or something that are very very expensive Jar Jar Binks in, in Carbonite but I think I think the uh, the Canadian Yoda is the one and I'm very very lucky to have one in terms of the value and the true value of it I think it all comes down to you know how many there are for sale at any point in time and also how much somebody is prepared to pay for it. Um, the last one I probably went for about $1,500, I want to say, which is a lot of money, isn't it? And, you know, if you ask me if that's the true value of something like that, then no, because it's a bit of plastic, it's a toy, but collectors are willing to pay that much and there you go, that's how much they cost. All right, let's break up the questions very quickly to first of all talk about the giveaway that I'm gonna be doing. So there's gonna be two giveaways, one for my Patreon supporters and channel members, and the other for all you guys that just watch the video. And first of all, let's talk about the one for all you guys just watching the video. So I'm gonna be giving away these two things anywhere in the world, you, you can live anywhere in the world, I will post these, that is completely on me. So you have the Black Series Archive Collection Obi-Wan Kenobi, and you have a Bo-Katan vintage collection they're both in pretty good condition and all you need to do to enter to win these is to like this video you have to like the video you have to be a subscriber and you need to ask a question down below um it could be about anything it could be about me as a collector it could be about the vintage collection it could be about the black series anything you want you can ask it down below and that will enter you into the giveaway and then on next week's ask boss bounty I will draw the winner. And then for my Patreon supporters and channel members, these are the items that you guys can win. I'll make a separate video for you guys on how you guys can win this. But if you do want to be a channel member or a Patreon supporter, the links are in the description below. But that is not all. But also I just wanted to say that I am very, very close to having 100 Patreon supporters and channel members, which is absolutely mind blowing. I thank you all so much for the support and supporting that channel this way allows me to make more and better videos. It pays for equipment, better lighting, better cameras, all that kind of stuff. All the sorts of things that can ramp up the channel. It also helps me pay for things that I want to do for you guys, which is monthly giveaways for channel members and Patreon supporters. And when I reach 100, I'm going to do my first one. And the first of those giveaways for Patreon supporters and channel members is going to be this. So this is a graded quill and it's U90 so it's an uncirculated new 90 it's got a card score of 90 a bubble of 90 and a figure of 95 so it's got a U90 gold and this is a variant if you like this is the Hong Kong import so that's a little bit different um, and I just thought that this would be a pretty cool thing to give away to you guys. So when I reach 100 of you guys that support the channel in that way, and as I said, the links for those are in the description below. When I reach 100 of you, things like this will be a monthly thing, a monthly giveaway. And uh, this is going to be the first one. So check that out if you want. All right, then. so on to a few more questions before we do the unboxings. Trace Green says, howdy BB, would you think a Vader's meditation chamber, much like the Hasbro's 500th figure, would be cool to see in TVC? Also, how do you think they would package it? Well, to be honest, I think that's a, a great idea. I love the meditation chamber. And I think also with the fact that Mr. Vader is going to be in the Obi-Wan series and Judging by the trailer and the way they're putting on his armor and stuff, I think we might see that meditation chamber. So I think that's a great shout to have as like, I don't know, maybe like a convention exclusive or something. Perhaps it wouldn't sell well in the main line. I really don't know. And that's, again, coming down to how they would package it. I really don't know how they would do that, but perhaps something like they did for the Emperor's Throne Room, maybe. I don't know. But yeah, you're right. It would be very cool to have that meditation chamber, that round thing. And if it opened out and Lake Vader was in there and everything, that would be that would be awesome. Tony J says, great video as always. Question for next week. What is the oldest figure that still stands up today? That is a great question. And I had to 
really sort of think about this one because I was thinking about, you know, how many figures have we had over the years? And I was trying to think of the oldest ones. And these are two that I've pulled out that I think um, were just amazing for their time. And considering we haven't really had too many new versions of these, I still think these two hold up. You've got a man man here, which he looks great. And I don't think there's a lot of difference between him and the Power of the Jedi version. If you look at that, I think he's a great sculpt, great colours. I think that holds up today. And then I always talk about Squid Head. I mean, you know, considering this was made in 1983, look at the look at the head sculpt on this fella. I mean, he, it's fantastic. Really, really good. Full of soft goods for his skirt and his cape. I think, again, that figure really holds up. But of course, you know, I would love a new version of Squid Head. Absolutely. But... I think those two hold up. And then if you think about maybe a modern figure, I was thinking like maybe FX7 from 2001. What else do you need to do to that figure? He could be in the vintage collection, no problem. Jeffrey Horner says, hey boss, question for next week. Given the lack of popularity with the sequel trilogy, do you think we'll ever see a HasLab project that will feature a large ship or play set like the Bomber or Snoke's throne room from episode eight? I've got to say, you've kind of said it in, in the question there, the, you know, the lack of popularity. I think it's just too dangerous and too too much of a risk for Hasbro to do. I know there is people out there that love the sequel trilogy and I'm not going to slam it in this video, but you know, I think even the people that absolutely love the sequel trilogy have to understand and they probably do realise that, you know, releasing toys, especially HasLab projects on that sort of thing is is a huge risk. Morgan Pogue says, Hey boss, love the content. Keep it up. Question for next week. Do you think we'll ever get any vintage collections for the Bad Batch and Rebels? I think Rebels, I've said this before, I don't think we'll get Rebels as in as in like the cartoon Rebels. I think we'll have to wait for those characters to appear in some kind of live action. That's just my personal opinion. Bad Batch is a completely different thing. I think it's still current. There's a new series on the horizon. We've had them in the Black Series recently. And I, I think we will get them in the Vintage Collection. Hopefully, uh, maybe one or two of them next year. Cisco Deer says, my question for next week is, do you think Hasbro will redo the Imperial Briefing Room set from Entertainment Earth, but in this case, make it a Walgreens exclusive or a GameStop exclusive? Thank you, BB. The Imperial Briefing Room, that is that is awesome. I think, I don't think we'll get anything like that until we get a new sculpt of the Imperial Officer. And I highly recommend that you check out an article on the Bantha Skull website where they talk about their sort of three figures that could be used to retool lots of other figures and one of those is the imperial officer and you know if we've got for example admiral piet that would allow them to make krennic and thrawn and the one from the morak episode in the mandalorian which i forget his name now but he was a really evil officer and he would be pretty cool to have in the vintage collection so i highly recommend you checking out that article i'll leave a link in the description below but um I don't think, as I say, we'd get an Imperial briefing room until we get that new officer. But when we do get that new officer, I would love for them to do something like that. Just give us them all in one hit. But I do think in this day and age, something like that would have to be like a, as you say, an exclusive. Steve Luther says, hi boss, great video. I always find them informative. My question for this week is, why do you think we don't see many vehicles for the vintage collection? Budget conscious re-releases of smaller vehicles like speeder bikes, just seem like a no-brainer to me. Just a quick aside, have you ever seen the Robot Chicken specials? The Bosque Shoes sketch always makes me think of your channel. Thanks so much and keep up the great content coming. Yeah, I have seen all of the Robot Chickens and the, the shoes one is funny because he's he's the only bounty hunter there that hasn't put his shoes on, isn't he? And he's trying to tie them up. I, I love Robot Chicken, it's hilarious. As for your question, my friend, I think, yeah, vehicles, I think it's just retail are scared of them now. I think they always go to clearance. They take a lot of um, shelf space up, don't they? So that's probably one of the factors. But I wouldn't panic. I think we are due for some vehicles, maybe one, maybe two this year. And certainly next year, we're going to be getting some vehicles. Do not worry about that. Sci-Fi says, a question I asked only on Kenobi and now I ask you. What figure would you like to see that's a total original, not a repack or repaint? New sculpt from any movie or TV show. Cheers, Tim. Thank you very much, Sci-Fi, for the question. Um, I've, I'm going to be quite obvious with this and I've put these two customs here that um, a subscriber of mine called GA sent me and they're awesome. And it's the Tonka Sisters. I think they're the classic one that's never been made. I would love to see them in the vintage collection. Never made in vintage or modern. And I think those two are no brainers for me. If I was to pick another one, it would probably have to be Velkin Tazeri again, just to complete that skiff 
we have all the other characters for the skiff the prisoner skiff and it would be awesome to have Velk and Tazeri to just finish that scene off if I was to choose something new that's from the new media it'd have to be the heavy infantry Mandalorian which would be an all new sculpt because we desperately need him in the vintage collection and GA who gifted me these two wonderful customs here asks a question he says hi BB question for episode 128 assuming Hasbro make the terrible decision to drop plastic bubbles on TVC do you think the solution may be for them to sell TVC figures even just the original 96 or OT ones as carded figure with bubble inside a cardboard sleeve or box i.e the sleeve box is the packaging and the carded figures is the product so I wasn't planning on answering a question about the plastic packaging. I literally had so many in last week's video. It was ridiculous. So many people asking about the plastic packaging, which is fair enough because it is a very hot topic right now and we haven't actually seen what Hasbro's going to do. But this is exactly what I think they should do, uh, GA. This, you know, even as you say, if it's just for the original 96 or the original trilogy figures, they've got to pack them in some kind of sleeve like or like they did for the proto fair in those white boxes or, or something just to say that you know the carded figure inside is the product the vintage collection carded figure with the bubble is the product but i really don't know we're gonna have to wait and see what they're gonna do um no announcements as of yet hopefully if they are going to be going plastic free that they allow some exemption for at least the OT or 96 figures. Please, Hasbro. All right, just another quick break from the questions. I uh, just want to open this fan mail. Now, this one was sent to me by Keith Guppy, who is a fan of the channel and a Patreon supporter as well. And um, he knew that I needed this figure in here, so I know what it is. Um, and he sent it to my PO box there, Bosk's Bounty PO box 2154 Worthing BN12 9EW. So thank you so much for this, Keith. Let's open it up and see what we have inside. We have a little note here. I always like the notes. And a, oh, it's like a business card there. That is really cool. Uh, it says, hi, Tim. Oh, let me just, there we go. Hi, Tim, as promised, please enjoy and keep up the great work, mate. Have one of my business cards and shout if you ever need anything else. Cheers, Keith. Now, I don't know whether anyone knows Keith out there in the community, but Keith Guppy literally has the biggest collection of Star Wars in the UK in terms of at least modern stuff anyway. Um, I think he's been featured on BBC and stuff like that. Crazy collection, Keith, you really have. And I really appreciate this, buddy, because this is Commander Bakara for the Legacy Collection. And I've wanted this figure for so long, but he's been... It just the prices for him on eBay are just silly really so thank you so much for gifting me this my friend because he is going to go very very nicely with my galactic marines which I have a little mini army of and I'll be opening this guy up on a video uh, probably with little Bosk at some time in the future so thank you so much for that my friend really really appreciate it and another thing arrived in the post uh, yesterday morning and this one is from Trevor Baker on Instagram I will leave his Instagram I'll try and put it on the screen here and also I'll leave it in the description below but basically he's well into Star Wars Lego and he contacted me and said I've got a few Star Wars bits in the loft that I don't need um, maybe you can make some use of them so yeah absolutely let's see what you've sent me mate and uh, this should be good all right so I've taken the contents out of the box and they're all wrapped in these uh, bits of paper here to keep them secure so let's just go ahead and open them up shall we Oh wow, okay, so that, I believe that is the Woolworths uh, trilogy collection, isn't it? This is the Woolworths one. I think I do have this myself, so I'll probably have to give this one to my son. I know you did say that a lot of this stuff would probably be for Little Bosk, and um, yeah, I think he'll like that. A new Darth Vader for him. Next up, we have the Saga Collection Sand People, and this is awesome because... Little Bosk has wanted one of these guys for ages. Um, he's got lots of sand people, but not the ones with the bendy arms, as he says. So um, I'm definitely going to, again, give this one to my son because I do have this one loose and carded and uh, he wants this one loose. So that's that's perfect. So thank you so much. And we have another one here. Haha. <laughs> We have a Power of the Force Yoda. There we go. So another one to open. I'm sure, again, my son will like this one because um, it comes with that little carry case. 
he loves the older figures so that's cool so thank you once again my friend lots of older stuff in this lot <laughs> a couple of loose figures wow look at that <laughs> not too sure what's happened to wait mace windu's lightsaber there that look at that i have to straighten that out and we've got a uh sidious as well so yeah thank you for those i'll make sure that the uh, little, little boss gets hold of those and finally we have what's in here oh wow i've got to say i'm going to be keeping that <laughs> i'm going to be keeping this one this is definitely one for my collection i do not have this and um, oh, I, I forget his name. He begins with B, doesn't he? But this is the um, lizard type thing that Obi-Wan uh, rides when he's fighting General Grievous in Revenge of the Sith. So this is awesome. I think he's articulated. Uh, I think if you move his, yeah, if you move his legs, look, his mouth opens, which is awesome. It's loads of detail on this fella. Move his tail and his head moves as well. So thank you so much for that. That's that's great that's going to look good in the in the uh, collection so thank you so much for those bits and bobs from your loft my friend um i'm happy to take them off your hands and my my son's going to enjoy a lot of those so thank you once again louise bow says hi bb i've started really following your channel recently and my question is where is the best place to find older figures mainly clone troopers for cheap so i don't know about cheap but the best place to get older figures certainly is the facebook groups um yeah, the vintage collection facebook book group there's one in the us and the uk you've got loads of other ones out there just just search for them basically you will find them and they are definitely the best place to get cheaper figures 100 percent. all right then that's it for this week's video thank you guys for the questions always appreciated make sure you leave your questions in the comment section below for next week's episode because that will also get you an entry into the giveaway that you also need to be a subscriber and also like the video thank you so much to my channel members and patreon supporters your support is awesome don't forget that that other giveaway will be coming your way as well so keep an eye out for that on the various channels thank you all for watching and we shall see you on the next one